Hey, CBC family, Sister Jen here with the Children's Ministry, um, ready to jump, leap into God's Word. Um, still very excited after last weekend of knowing that Jesus has risen. Um, we've learned that not only is Jesus our Messiah, the promised one who was to come, as was said in the Old Testament scriptures in the Bible, but also that he paid the penalty for our sin when he died on the cross. Um, he was buried, and on that third day, he rose. We're so glad that he rose. So now we get eternal life with Jesus Christ when we believe. So that's what we're going to look at today. Um, continuing on after Jesus was resurrected, he's going to begin now for 40 days before he actually goes back up into heaven and be with God. Um, he's actually going to be um, showing himself to in his resurrected body, a real body, but his resurrected. This is the really God side of him to um, believers. So they are encouraged. So his word is actually going to be confirmed meaning when they see Jesus in his resurrected body they will have a better understanding of what Jesus was talking about and what he really meant with a resurrected body and then so that they can be prepared to go and tell that's what Jesus commissioned us to do to go and tell other people that what he said was true what he did was real and now it's our turn, just like the disciples told others, it's our turn now. It's your turn now to tell somebody else about who Jesus is. So I'm going to pray for us. Hopefully you've already got your Bible with you. So we're going to be looking at John chapter 20. Um, but let me pray. God, we thank you that your word is true. We acknowledge, we believe that your Bible, the Holy Word that you have written to us and for us is true. Um, you wrote it so that we might know you better, um, so that we can come into a relationship with you, so we can tell others about who you are, um, and that when we are confused or when we're fearful, when we're just not sure about um why things happen or what's going to happen when we read your word god we can be encouraged and be reminded of how good a god you are how loving you are how gracious you are towards us what you did for us um, with jesus dying on the cross so that we too can be encouraged and tell other people about who you are. We thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit lives in us now, so that we can understand your word better. Um, so we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, open up your Bibles. Let's go to John chapter 20. So this is after um, Jesus was risen. And the disciples, remember when Jesus was arrested, the disciples were so scared and they just scattered when they were in the garden. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what was going on. They were very fearful. Um, so here they are. It had only been about a week after Jesus had been risen and he was in his resurrected body that the disciples are back together. They came back together they are in one of you know one of the houses there but they're behind locked doors they're fearful of being arrested and possibly going through what Jesus just went through they didn't know I mean if Jesus was arrested what was going to happen to them so they were still very fearful and they really they didn't totally understand what Jesus was talking about so that's why Jesus was going to come to him. So today we're going to be looking at how um, Jesus is a savior, but he also shows us who he is. So um, we're going to meet Thomas. Thomas had, he had a hard time believing what Jesus was saying, but we can believe that Jesus is our savior and that God's gift of salvation is for 
everyone needs it. Everybody needs salvation. Remember, salvation is believing in Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God. He died for he died on the cross for our sins. He was buried. He rose from the grave and now is in heaven with God. So he saved us from the penalty of sin. And that is our salvation when we believe in Jesus Christ alone. We just have to believe. That's all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ alone. And you too will be saved. And you too will get to go and be in heaven forever with God. But the disciples at that time, they didn't have um, a full understanding yet. So, and of course, Jesus wanted them to have a full understanding. How loving is he? He still wanted them to know and learn, and there was much to be learned. So, Jesus um, is going to appear to them. So, here are the disciples. They are in the room, like I said. And the doors are locked because they're afraid of being arrested. There they are. Think about how you might feel. You're just, you're, you're in your house and the doors are locked. And then all of a sudden, here is Jesus, Jesus in his body. Like you can see me right now. They saw Jesus. There he was. He didn't come through a door. Now what that looks like, I don't know. I think it's amazing how God, I couldn't do that. People can't do that. But Jesus, because he is God, he can do amazing and impossible things. So he appears to them. And the first thing Jesus says is, peace be with you. Jesus knew that they were going to be afraid. Jesus knew that they didn't really understand. But Jesus knew also what he was going to tell them to do. So Jesus comes to them to encourage them. Um, so the 10 disciples were there. So Thomas wasn't with them. And Jesus is talking with them. And then he's gone. Jesus was gone again. And they were so excited. And when Thomas comes back, they couldn't wait to tell Thomas, you're not going to believe this. Jesus was here. And Thomas is like, I won't believe it until I can see the the nail prints in his hand oh, and remember he was Jesus was pierced in the side Thomas was like I'm not gonna believe it until I see it so why do you think um Thomas had a hard time believing well that's we don't know Thomas's thoughts but how would you feel if you were Thomas and you weren't there and you didn't see Jesus's resurrected body would you really believe what everybody else was saying? Well, we can't be too hard on Thomas. Of course, we would want him to believe. We want everybody to believe. But again, did they have a Bible like we do? Did they are they able to open up the were they able to open up the pages and read everything? No. They didn't have a Bible like we do today. So be very grateful. We are blessed. We can open up the Bible and we can learn um, about who Jesus is. And we can be reminded like we are today. We're being reminded that there's going to be those who, who don't believe. Thomas was with them. Thomas was one of the disciples who walked with Jesus for those three years of his ministry before he died on the cross. So, but look how good God is. Look how loving Jesus is. So it's eight days later and they're in the room together again, behind locked doors, fear of being arrested, um, fear of harm from the Jewish leaders who still don't want people talking about Jesus. And especially the Jewish leaders did not want them talking about, um, Jesus resurrection. Because then that would prove the scriptures. That would prove what they were saying was true. What Jesus was talking about the whole time was true. And the Jewish leaders who were not believing, they um, wanted people to stop talking about Jesus. So they're in the room together. And this time Thomas is with them. The door is still locked. Don't want anybody to get them. So again, here comes Jesus. Jesus appears in his body, resurrected body. And what do you think that first thing he said again was? That's right. Peace be with you. 
peace be with you as my father sent me this is jesus talking as my father sent me i am now sending you so jesus was letting them know that they were going to now be the ones to continue telling the world about who jesus is because everybody needs a savior we're all sinners everybody needs a savior everybody needs to be saved by jesus christ and that's the only way the only way is by believing in jesus christ Jesus in that room goes right to Thomas and he says, Thomas, feel my hands. And so Thomas could see where the nail had gone through. And Thomas says, my Lord, my God. He finally believed. But Jesus said that in verse um, 20, he says, because you have seen me, you have believed blessed are those who have not seen me and they believe that would be us do we get to see jesus in his resurrected body no we haven't seen him but we have the bible to help us know to help us learn and understand we've heard about the, the many witnesses we're going to learn more about that. So here Jesus goes to the disciples first after his resurrection. He appears to them first. But he's going to re, um, appear to many different people. Because especially in the Jewish tradition, there was they needed witnesses. You had to have at least two witnesses that it was true. Then they, people would believe that what you said was true. But Jesus will appear even at one point to more than 500 people at a time. Because Jesus is commissioning him he is calling us and telling us it's now your turn to go and tell other people about who i am what i did that jesus fulfilled all the old testament scriptures remember in the old testament that was like almost what like 700 years before jesus was even born 700 years before jesus was even born so god was preparing them then Jesus came, some believed, some did not, but now it was the disciples' turn. And so Jesus kept appearing to them. Um, how would you feel if all of a sudden Jesus was in front of you and says, here's my hands? But in that scripture, he lets us know that, um, excuse me, it's verse 29, I apologize. John chapter 20, verse 29 is when Jesus said, blessed are those who haven't seen him and believe. So we want to um, ask God to help us tell. So what do we have that can help us tell about who Jesus is? I'll give you a minute to think about that. We have the Bible. The Bible lets us know. So we can read the Bible, learn more about the Bible. Um, Jesus through the Bible, especially in the New Testament, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the first four books, they let us know um, about Jesus when that was when he was alive. I know it's four books, but they're all telling the same thing. They're different um, accounts because like Matthew, he was writing to the G Jewish people. So he had a lot of Old Testament scriptures. John was writing to everyone. So when someone believes in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord for the first time, the book of John is really good to read, to, to read through that. Um, all of them are good, of course. All of God's word is good. But so now Jesus is letting them know, now it's your turn to tell. So who do you know in your life um, that might need to know about Jesus? They're not sure about um how to feel right now. They might even feel scared. You might even feel scared. But when Jesus left, remember, um, we're going to learn about next week. Although we've talked about this before and we've actually studied Acts chapter 2. That's going to be next week's lesson. I'm giving you a little taste so you'll be excited about it. Because who is going to come and indwell the believers and give them that strength and that courage and that the power to go and tell people I'm going to leave that see leave that question for you so you can answer it next week. All right. So now parents, here is our tip. So thanks for listening to the Bible lesson. Here is our tip 
for um, the next way that you can memorize scripture. Um, this is a game that we haven't done in a super long time. But again, it's a very quick and easy. So if we're, we're going to continue using John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus answered, said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Um, no one comes to the Father except through me. So what you're going to do this time is either get you know, small pieces of paper. If you still have the ones from one of our previous games, each word is going to be on one piece of paper, or you can do it on a three by five card. And what you're going to do is you're going to hide, parents, you get to hide the pieces of paper all around a room. Okay. And so your child is there. What they're going to do is go find each piece of paper and then put it again together like a puzzle. So it's doing the puzzle again, but it makes it more fun because you're going to be hiding them around the room. So they have to go and go have to go find the piece of paper, come back and start to put it in order. And if you have more than one child, well, then they can take turns going and finding the pieces of paper and then putting the scripture together. We want the scripture to be in order so that um, we're memorizing it correctly. Okay. And then, ha -ha, students, it's your turn. Now, students, you are going to go hide the pieces of paper around the room so that your parents can now join you and help going and finding the pieces of paper, but then also help memorizing the scripture together. Um, God wants um, the families to be learning his word together, studying his word, praying, and memorizing scripture together. So I hope you enjoy um, the tips of the um, scripture memory verse games. There will be more games that I'll be teaching you each week. Um, know that I miss you. We're praying for you. Um, and it will be quite a celebration when we all get to come back together. All right. Have a wonderful week. And I'll see you next week for Acts chapter 2.